Titzaveh. The portions of Kuma and Titzaveh, which deal with the sanctuary, have together some 70 verses which describe the garb of the priest, the regular priest, and the high priest. The specific four garments of the regular priest and the even more special eight garments of the high priest. Why all of this stress upon externals? Is it really true what the sartorial designers would try to have us believe? That clothes make the man? That clothes create the individual? Of course that is not entirely so. We know from all of our prayers and the tractate blessings that Rahman al boy. God really desires the heart. And it's the, and it's the internal state of mind and emotion and heart and soul which really creates the human being. Nevertheless, it would be wrong to state that exterior garb has nothing at all to do with individual mood and feeling. You know it yourselves, I think, very well from daily life. Any psychologist and psychiatrist will tell you that the first sign that an individual is entering into a depression, or God forbid Alzheimer's is setting in, is when the individual doesn't take notice and care about his own physical appearance, about her own dress and garb. Undoubtedly, our clothes represent a certain calling card. They're the external expression that we wear to the world. It's the first impression that everyone has of us. And it influences how other people think of us and it also influences how we think of ourselves. After all, the Sabbath requires, in addition to everything else, special Sabbath garb. White on Yom Kippur has become a very important symbol of the day. And when we're dressed in a special fashion, it helps us to think of what is unique about the experience that's going on. What's special about the occasion that we're celebrating. We wouldn't think of going to an important wedding or anniversary celebration without something special as well in the sartorial department. I want to go a step further. The clothes we wear say a great deal about the personalities we are. I like bright colors. My wife once asked me why, because what I pick out for myself is my ties, and I usually am very careful about the ties, and I like them to be colorful ties. And I said to my wife, listen, I want to make a statement. So she says, you don't need the tie to make the statement. But then I thought people who like to make statements like to wear colors as well. And modest people dress modestly. And things that we think are really precious, we always cover over in a safe, in a special chest of drawers. And the more precious we believe it to be, the more do we guard it. The most intimate relationships 
are not the relationships that we share with the public, but we cover them. And so it is that the Holy Bible, a Torah scroll, must be covered. And the Ark must have a parochet, or a curtain covering. And the body, especially the areas of the body which is used when human beings become God's partners in sexual reproduction, must be covered. That which is sacred and holy and intimate and precious and unique is always covered. And the holier, the more special the covering. And hence, immediately after the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God makes for them garments to cover their nakedness. So that I would actually say, clothes don't make the man, but clothes do distinguish the man. Distinguish the human being from beast. And indeed, distinguish the priestly class, who spend their entire lives tending to the temple and its needs, the people and the teaching of the Torah to the people. Likewise, are distinguished first and foremost by their profession and their actions, but additionally by their garments. Shabbat Shalom.